Hey guys, it's Jane. I'm here today to do a response video to a video that I saw P.T. Hilton make and um, put up last week about his most tattered books. Now P.T. did it in his backyard on a beautiful summery day and it made me feel really jealous because I'm standing here uh, mid-morning with lights on all over and casting shadows because it's so dark and overcast outside. I'm in a t-shirt but that's only because I've got the heater on immediately behind me and um, it's not a kind of day where I'll be filming outside. Let's just start there. But um, when he started talking about his tattered books, it just immediately I just went, I've I've got to do one of these because tattered books is 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 entirely where my collection is at. <laughs> so as distinct from all the girly cheeks with their beautiful matching covers, tattered books is what I'm about. <laughs> so um, I went through and five books pretty much selected themselves. Five books on my shelves with with no spines, essentially. <laughs> so this is the five that I'm going to show to you today. Um, the very first one is The Man in Grey by Baroness Auxy. Um, here we are with the entire lack of, of spine there on the edge. When I picked this out because I was looking at my most tattered books, I um, I thought, you know, I'm actually fully in the mood to reread this one. Um, uh, Baroness Auxy is very famous for the Scarlet Pimpernel. This is something that's in, in very much the same sort of tone, but um, a lesser known work. But let me just read you the chapter headings um, because seriously, it that's, yeah. Okay, chapter one, Silver Leg. Chapter two, The Spaniard. Chapter three, The Mystery of Marie Valiant. Chapter four, The Emeralds of Mademoiselle Philippa. Chapter five, The Bourbon Prince. Chapter six, The Mystery of a Woman's Heart. Chapter seven, The League of Knaves. Chapter eight, the Arrow Poison, and Chapter 9, The Last Adventure. Yep, that's got to be a rip-roarer, okay? I have read it. Um, a number of these books that I have, uh, I bought secondhand because um, I went through a bit of a love fair with secondhand books in my 20s when I yeah, didn't have a lot of money. And I was also, I think I was a bit of a hipster before my time. Like old stuff was really attractive to me because it was old. And look... That's got a, a beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, and But the thing is, I don't keep them to keep them. I keep them and read them, and this is, this is a good one. And, um, yeah. Next up, I've got one that I think I pretty much bought for the cover, The White Monkey by John Goldsworthy. And look at that. This one, at least, isn't perfect bound. It's got sewn signatures. So even though there's no spine here um, and the... The covers are fully coming off on this one. Um, it, it, because it's sewn signatures, it's actually going to last um, quite a while. This is um, one of the volumes of the Foresight Saga, which is this intense intergenerational family drama, which is not really my thing, but it's, yeah, it's a beautiful book. So there's that. Number three is one I've shown a million times before. This is one of my favourite books of all time, The Grand Babylon Hotel. Again, no spine there. Um, this was in significantly better condition when I, when I acquired it. But I've this is, of all of the ones um, that I'm going to show you, is one I've legitimately read to death. I've read this a million times. I don't read it in this copy anymore. I've got other copies that I ha keep for reading, but I'm never going to get rid of this one, which is the first one that I had. Now, number four is... Um, it's actually got the embossed title there, No Highway. This one is not my fault. This one belongs to my husband. It's a Neville Shoot. He's a big Neville Shoot fan. And um, so this is actually a more modern, it's nice and yellowed on the edge, but this is a significantly more modern book, <laughs> which is just not in good condition. He probably got it, almost certainly got it secondhand. But yeah, it's it was first published in the 40s, so it's uh, much younger than those other ones that I've shown you so far. But yeah, again, no spine. 
And last but not least, uh, this is, of all the books, um, the one that has the most sentimental value. And it's also the one that's tatted for probably the most embarrassing re reason. Um, this is the this is my Bible, the Bible that I was given as a child by my grandmother. And we have a lot of history, uh, this book and I. As about a 10-year-old, I sat down and tried to read this, like, from the beginning. Like, seriously, I read the, the translator's preface in this, which was fascinating, actually. <laughs> I don't know why as a 10-year-old I thought it was fascinating, but it is legitimately really interesting. It's a Revised Standard Version, which was the um, first major update since uh, in the English language since the um, Authorised Version, the King James Version. And so for hundreds of years, there was just one, pretty much one standard English translation, and this was the first of the new translations. It's now doesn't read like a new translation especially the old testament in here has still got these and thous in it so <laughs> but it was it opened the floodgates and the translator's preface in here is really fascinating <laughs> but um yeah I sat down and tried to read it and it did not make a lot of sense to me um yeah as a 10 year old or whatever when I first tried to read it and when I was um 12 uh, the town that I was living in, which is in an area of Australia, which is very prone to bushfires, the town that I was living in was basically um, burnt to the ground and um, I was evacuated, everybody, we were all evacuated and uh, we had about 10 minutes notice that we had to get out of our house. The police came to the door and told us that the town four kilometres down the road was already gone and we needed to leave now. <laughs> Uh, there was not there wasn't actually time to get out of town um, but we lived about five minutes walk from the beach and so we were being evacuated down to the beach uh, to sp and we spent the night on the sand on the beach um, waiting to find out whether or not our house would still be there in the morning and I wandered as a 12 year old I wandered the length and breadth of the house looking for something that I could take with me because I like you know, my parents were dealing with the insurance papers and I don't even think they managed to take the photographs because, like, you know, you, in that kind of rush, what do you do? Um, my sister took her Walkman and um, I walked the length and breadth of the house looking for something to take and I ended up taking this and I, I think as much as anything it was because it was pretty much the last present that I got from my grandmother before she died. So I I was it's a it's a sentimental a very sentimental thing for me. Um, I actually became a Christian after reading. I was re it was this book that I was reading finally what, years after I my first attempt when I was ten. I became a Christian and um, through reading this and but then it was some years later uh, I became a Christian pretty much on my own and then it was wasn't until I left home and I went to university that I actually met some other Christians who thought about things and could explain stuff to me and actually read the Bible and, you know, in first approximation why I understood it. And um, so there were a number of years when I was reading this and it still didn't make a lot of sense even though I kind of, you know, had thrown my lot in with it. And But uh, during that time... Between when I became a Christian and when I actually found somebody who could disciple me, who could explain stuff to me. There was like, I don't know, four or five years in between those two events. And um, at in that window, I um, did a lot of silly things because I'd just, I'd hear something and I was like told that that's what Christians did or thought or believed or whatever. And so I thought that that was what I had to do. Um, I, I seriously considered burning my rock music cassette tapes at that point. I never actually did it because I couldn't work out how I'd manage it without like fully getting grounded. But um, yeah, one of the other things that I read or heard or was told at that point was that God loved a tattered Bible. <laughs> he didn't like nice, neat ones. He liked tattered ones. And of course, the... The thought behind that saying was that he wanted, you know, that you should read it. You shouldn't just leave it on the shelf. But I was, you know, a teenager and somewhat literal-minded. And so I um, 
I beat this up. Now it's not all not all of this damage was through me consciously beating it up. There is actually quite a lot of annotations and stuff in here which is, you know, legitimate, but it wouldn't be in quite as bad a condition as it is if I had not heard that thing at a point when I didn't know any better. <laughs> so that is my embarrassing tattered Bible story. And um, that's my most tattered book. It's like literally it's got pages that are loose and stuff. It's it's in terrible bad nick. But um, I have another copy now which I read. <laughs> so that's okay. Anyway, if you have some tattered books at home, I'd love to see your tattered books and hear their stories as well. I hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.